Welcome to Make Up or Break Up with Judith Jameson of judithjameson.org. That is both the Facebook page and the website. You can go to the Facebook page for past episodes of this program. Go to the website for uh, information about contact information for Judith and uh, also to find out about events coming up and uh, some of the services that she offers. And uh, Judith, we can also, all that information is on the bottom of the screen right now if you're watching. You are not live, though. Uh, you're not live on the screen like you usually are, though. You're on the road, so we have you in via phone today. That's right. I am calling in live from Kennebunkport, Maine, which is phenomenal up here. Yeah, and as we were talking about a little bit before the show, weather got cooled off a little bit. Humidity went down, made for a beautiful day yesterday. You've had some good weather up there. That's right. So um, I invite everybody to come up to southern maine and <laughs> take a little take a little break from your busy day it's the way life um, should be that's right well the nice thing about the good news and the bad news <clears throat> with uh kenny bunk is that when george bush senior ran for president and and then got in this went from a sort of sleepy pretty little uh kind of a quiet but just very not even touristy Right. Uh, little yeah. place and then it just like went crazy and in some respects like as we watched it grow because my family would summer up here we all kind of disliked all of that but i actually sort of appreciate it more now because like any place <clears throat> um even like you've probably seen it in newburyport you have different restaurants now and um, some kind of cool shops that we didn't used to have as kids. You know, we were pretty limited to, like, the bookstore and the pharmacy. Right. <laughs> that was pretty much it. And the candle shop, which then, ironically, burnt down one night. That was odd. Uh, <laughs> really? Was that been... odd? Was that really odd? <laughs> <laughs> Strange. I think they forgot to blow one of the candles out. But anyway, that was pretty strange. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so it's just a beautiful area. And... Uh, for my husband and I, this is just our go-to place. We love oceanside, oceanside areas. You know, some people like the mountains. Like my son, he loves the mountains. He loves to go hiking. Uh, he and his fiance, that's just their go-to thing. Right. And so for us, this is a time, you know, speaking of makeup or breakup, if we didn't have downtime like this, Lou, um, in a place that we both enjoy, I think you know, it would just add stress to the relationship because, as you know, when you're in a relationship, you need some downtime and you need some just one-on-one -on -one quiet time. Right. I, with your son, however, one of the great mm -hmm. things, people who are watching nationally, and one of the great things about living here on the seacoast of northern New England is that you're less than an hour from the mountains, you're a half an hour, 40 minutes from Portland or Boston, where you can get all the sophistication you want. Uh, right. You can be on the seacoast. You can have anything mm -hmm. you want around here within like a, an hour's drive. Right. Exactly. And, you know, what I, what I do see happening in some of these towns, let's just just to segue right into relationships, um, <clears throat> in some of these towns, what you and I would consider like, oh, this is this is so special. If I lived, you you and I would say, well, if I lived here, so let's just say, okay, theoretically, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just say um, you lived up on some cute little street, <clears throat> sort of away from the fray of like say Salisbury Beach, but you know further up the coast. Maybe you lived in Portsmouth, right? And um, you lived outside of the town of Portsmouth and you were on the ocean. When people move to a place like that as a couple or they're single and they're hoping that they're going to meet somebody, they're, they're sort of daydreaming and saying, oh, this would be a great place to live. If I lived here or if we lived here together, we could take walks every evening together. We could take a morning walk at 7 a.m. with our dog. Right. And when you know what happens is then when you actually live there, um, especially as a couple, people are in such a routine that they almost, although they see the ocean right. and they enjoy it, they're not really taking couples' walks every evening or every morning with their dog. Right. Right? Yeah, you kind of take it, it for granted, the, local, the really local stuff. Exactly. You take it for granted. So what I've seen up here over the years, and uh, certainly it's not... Um, it's not unusual, but what I've seen is more of a breakdown here because the people that live here, they're, the breakdown of their relationships, because they take it for granted, 
um, they aren't even taking walks around the ocean in the winter, which I don't know about you, but I love walking on the beach in the winter. No, we'll find out this winter. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I haven't done That's it in right. a long time, but we'll find out this winter. That's right, because you're going to be buying a place on the ocean. Just, yeah, more or less, yeah. 800 feet from it, anyway. Right. But I'm not saying in a snowstorm, although that would be kind of neat to watch, but taking advantage of the fact that one of the reasons why you're moving to a place like that and a reason why my husband and I love coming to Kennebunkport is, is exactly for the ocean views, for you know, sitting on a bench and just enjoying it for a little bit rather than just keeping it in our head. Oh, yeah, I live near the ocean. I live near the ocean. Right. Because it really does have an impact on your mental health, your outlook on life, um, how you feel each day. I mean, I don't know about you, but a walk on a beach can just... Oh, it makes, really all, just, it makes all the difference in the world. I think one right. of the principles that you're talking mm -hmm. about that really needs yep. to be important is that the reason people don't do things locally or they start to tra take for granted local is because when we want to take walks and things like that and we want mm -hmm. to relax, we want to get away from things. So what happens is right. the home becomes things. So if you don't get far enough away, you don't get away from your problems and the things that are stressing you, it's mm -hmm. important to keep that home environment as stress-free as possible. The home environment itself is supposed to be an escape, isn't it? Right. Your home environment is supposed to be, that's why, where the term homey comes. Right. Right? Comes in. So if a house doesn't feel, if a house feels like a house, then it doesn't feel like a home. I mean, there's a difference, right? Right. A home is a place that you want to come home to. A house is just a building and a structure that puts a roof over your head. Well, and, and there are more insidious yeah. uh, things about this, whether there's tension between uh -huh. the couple and things like that, and that's a whole different, uh, whole different thing. But these days, uh, with couples, both couples working, often jobs involve doing work at home, answering emails, making phone uh -huh. calls, things like that. And it's important to keep that reined in because you don't want the, ho the home environment to become an, just another, you know, remote stress point. You want it to be, you know, I use the term safe harbor all the time. You want the home to be someplace where you can get away from all that and recharge a little bit. Right. Absolutely. And you know and better than most. Your business is largely on the phone. You don't really work out of an office as much. So, you know, you must right. be, you must be uh, balancing this uh, yourself quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm usually the only one around if, I'm, if I uh, have phone calls and I'm making them from my home office. Uh, but, yeah, it, it gets a little bit messy because sometimes I get lazy and I just sprawl out and have my business calls happening down in the dining room on the table. Yeah. And my husband comes home and he just sort of looks at the dining room table like, what just happened? I'm like, I know, it's a hurricane <laughs> over here. It's ugly. Yeah. It is. And so you're right, it's not really relaxing. But the I, I find one of the... Your husband yeah. comes home and there's dinner, and dinner is supposed to be one of those places where you set things down and, and you know, just let go for a little bit and relax. And right. uh, your business doesn't have hours the way normal businesses are. And a lot of people are working that type of thing where, the, you know, we're not restrained to the office anymore. We, we're doing things mm -hmm. uh, all mm -hmm. over the place. So the husband comes home from a day at work, and he wants dinner to be stress-free, and maybe you've got a client in crisis or, you know, right. part of the couple has a, a job crisis that they're dealing with. And so that your partner doesn't get the break either that he's looking for because you're stressed right out. right so it's important to have that unplugging time and the other thing too is for my husband he works often on saturdays and sometimes unfortunately even on a sometimes on a, a sunday at 12 or 1 mm -hmm. uh so he'll have a meeting or he and he definitely gets phone calls from customers on the weekends because most of his work customers are busy during the day so they're calling him at night or on the weekend. Right. So uh, that ends up sometimes being a little bit problematic, especially if we're like driving to go out to eat. Uh, you know, it's frustrating. Right, sure. And it's sort of like, really? Especially because if it's in the car, to be honest, I honestly can't stand listening to the conversation. I really don't want to hear it. And I have no choice because I'm sitting in the front seat. <laughs> right. You're kind of a captive you know? audience there, yeah. Right. But it's about, it's about yeah. carving out a priority for mm -hmm. the relationship and that home element as well, though. And it, obviously, we have jobs. Right. We have things we have to do. This, some of this is unavoidable. But just mm -hmm. if you keep it in your mind that it's a certain level of priority, these things tend to straighten themselves out. Mm -hmm. It's Absolutely. when your partner thinks they're not enough of a priority that things become problematic. 
Right, right. Well, it's funny because we're sort of old-fashioned at this point, and we still like to, I still like to go down to Redbox and see what the newest movie is that came out. Oh, yeah. Sure. You can get it in other forms, right? Um, you know, a lot of people have, they get their movies through, like, Apple or the Roku or whatever they use. Right. We have a Roku, but we kind of forgot how to use it. A friend <laughs> gave it to us as a gift, and now we can't remember how to do it. But um, I like to go down, and sometimes if I'm at Stop and Shop, I'll just take a peek at the movies, and especially if something kind of new came out, even if it's like a comedy, uh, you know, one of those, like, cartoony sort of caricature movies where it's kind of for kids but adult humor. Right. Kind of like Despicable Me. I think that's sure, Despicable yeah. Me is hilarious. Yep. Um, and so I'll, I'll take a look and I'll bring one home. And it's funny because there's some times where my husband will be like, looking at me like, uh, when are we going to carve two hours out tonight to watch a movie? Right, exactly. And I'm yeah. like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, oops. Uh, well, hopefully we can because this has to be back tomorrow and I don't feel like paying another dollar fifty nine. so... Um, to keep it out for a second night. Yeah, but, that's particularly difficult because the movie is mm. kind of a, the, the movie is a commitment. You don't want to be getting up and down in the middle of the movie or taking phone calls or pausing the movie. No. When, you, when you start the movie, you want to run through the movie. Right. you got to unplug. Right. And um, so now, like, it sounds kind of goofy, but I try to rent a movie because it is more of an effort than just, you know, searching on the, uh, you know, on the, in the movie section. I think we only get HBO anyway. Right. But, you know, a lot of couples, they don't even take the time, even maybe once a week, to say, hey, let's look at the movie channels and see what's on HBO. And maybe it's a movie, even if we've already seen it, it's a good one, like Mission Impossible or right. you know, a classic, right? Sure. Um, but it's interesting because when we do it, like, we both kind of look at each other like, wow, this is really great. Yep. Well, because like you, just, you just get in the moment for a while, right? You just relax. Mm -hmm. You drop mm -hmm. everything for a while. And it's... Uh, that's what home's supposed to be, hopefully for a longer period of time. And, and we have, it's a modern mm -hmm. world. We all have to deal with what we have to deal with for work and kids and things like that. But that two and yeah. a half hours that you look at a movie and go, wow, that was pretty cool. That's supposed to be a lot of your home life. If, if Hopefully, if, you, if you're able to pull it off, that's what a, a lot of your home life should be. Right, exactly. And I think it's important, you know, when we're talking about a show like this, makeup or breakup, theoretically, you want to get... You want to keep your relationship going just like you would a bicycle. So a bicycle doesn't, you know, you don't never do anything with a bicycle. You might have to pump up one of your tires. You might have to, like, wipe it off after it sits outside and it gets pollen all over it. Um, you know, the little bell might get rusty <laughs> over the winter and you have to, like, fix your little dingy, dingy bell. Or, I hate when um, my dingy is rusty. That's right. Your dinghy is rusty. I hate it. <laughs> Um, you know, you, now I'm just describing like my girly bike. You know, your little wicker <laughs> basket on the front might be getting kind of yucky and you might need to get a new one. Um, but people that are avid bicyclists are not just all about the spandex and the helmet and the cool shoes. They're also about the bike. They spend a lot of time and focus and a little bit of money. Um, but they're really focusing on maintaining and sometimes preemptive striking um, things that may go wrong with their bike. Right. And I think it, it's easier said than done. You and I know that. You know, we sit here on this show and we talk about all these wonderful idealistic things to do. Right. But if you keep, keep it in the front of your mind, in, in your front cortex or whatever, that it does take an effort. If both people remind themselves that it takes an effort, Sometimes the reason why people have a date night, and this is what I always recommend, they sit there and they're like, oh, my gosh, we have to put aside one night a week for date night? And they just, they, it blows their mind. Yeah. Right? Because they think they so don't have it. Right. They can't even believe that, like, wait, we have to do this weekly? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Like, look at all the things that you do in life. You wash your dishes once or twice a day, most likely. Um, you vacuum your house, hopefully, once a week. You make your bed, possibly, every day. You wash your sheets, hopefully, at least once a week. Um, you get an oil change, for goodness sakes, every two or three months, probably, with your car. Like, we're doing so many things in life. I get it. Like, we have a lot of things to do. 
but we're keeping up with all of those things, kind of like what you were saying is, you know, the house is the place where it should be relaxing, but the reality is we have all these different things that we do even in the house. But I, I always tell people, if you have time to schedule, you know, your oil change, um, your grocery shopping, let's be honest, most of us are ducking into a grocery store a couple of times a week. Now, why are you doing that? Yeah. Because you have to eat. You have to look at a relationship as, I have to keep this going, because what happens if you don't eat or you don't put your oil, your car into the garage for an oil change? Things get worse. Break down. Yeah. Right. You, you hit Let's upon a point that I think people lose sight of, and mm-hmm. I always put it to people, a, a, again, as if I follow my mm-hmm. own advice all the time, because this is a struggle I have too. A lot sure. of people don't. We're all human. Yeah, a lot of people don't take for themselves, and I like to remind people all the time mm-hmm. that when you're on a flight and they give you the instructions and they say if there's a yeah. problem, put your mask on first, because you're no right. good to your job, you're no good to your relationship if you're just chronically mm-hmm. stressed out and it's not working for you. So you need that time to recharge. You need a strong relationship at home. You need kind of a safe harbor at home so that you can be good keeping up with all these things because if you're working hard thinking you have to do it to keep all the balls in the air, you break down, all the balls fall. You, you really have to take care of yourself, and part of that is carving out this type of time for yourself and your relationship. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Absolutely. And that's why making scheduling, which you know people are like, oh, that's just – it's not – spontaneous so it's not romantic that's ridiculous yeah it's not romantic to get an oil change but i do it right (laughs) that's true um it's just you know things people have this idea that things have to be spontaneous in a relationship like this is my favorite one lou you've probably heard a lot of people talk about this like well he should know what i want for christmas oh yeah yeah or um or the husband might say i better not he might be saying to himself i don't really care about Christmas or birthdays because all I ever get is a shirt or a tie. But honestly, on the flip side, I am guilty of that. I love buying my husband a new shirt or a new tie. I know you're probably like, dude, that's stupid. I really do. (laughs) I really do. Because I know that he knows that he likes those things and he has to wear them to work. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm a girl, I'm sorry, but I have 25 lipsticks, but if he went to Sephora and bought me a pretty pink lipstick, I would just think that was like the bee's knees. <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't matter that I have 25 lipsticks or 100,000 pair of black pumps or black sandals. Not that he would ever dare go buy me a pair of shoes, but um, like, actually, that's not true. He did one year. He bought me boots, which was hilarious. I'm like, I've never met a guy that would buy somebody's shoes, you know, because I, <laughs> oh, I, buy, oh, I buy shoes all the time. No, for a woman, I mean. That, yeah, you know, no, that that's what I mean. That's high currency, right? Women like shoes. Well, we do, but it's funny because most men would never, I mean, they might buy you, I don't know, like a sweater, but they're cautious <laughs> with, like, big things like shoes or dresses or they might buy you a pocketbook. But, um, yeah, but he bought me boots one year. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> But um, let me you're talking about you being a girl and you're talking about, uh, you know, they never know what I want to to buy. mm -hmm. I got to I got to say this to women right now, girls and women right now. Right. Men are dogs. And I don't mean that in the worst way. I mean it in that we're very simple creatures. You know, we're not (laughs) mind readers. We don't get innuendo all that much. A lot of times Mm -hmm. it has to be put right in front of us. So if you're having problems with your guy that he just doesn't understand it doesn't get what you want it doesn't get what you need help him out yeah yeah help exactly. him out it's just, it's a, we're not capable of that type of nuance you know right well and the same and by the way i'm more capable of yeah. that than most and i'm saying this it's like god help me out here right and i think men and women are the same most men and women are the same they can't they can't really mind read if you're lucky you are married to somebody who you know just loves certain things mm-hmm Um, and then that's fine because they literally will say to you, look, every time you get me this, it's just fantastic because, you know, whatever, I I collect really cool mugs and that means a lot to me. Or, um, there's no such thing as too many tools because I'm always tinkering in the wood shop or whatever it is. Right. Um, so that's, that's great. I think personally, I think women, uh, tend to be more sensitive about expecting. So, you know what, men are from Mars or whatever that is, <laughs> women are from Venus, yeah. whatever it is. It is true, men and women do think differently. And women 
often have the love language of gifts for whatever reason, and they want it to be, because women tend to think, like women will often be the ones that plan out the romantic dinner and, you know, like just all the different things. But the reality is it's not really fair to expect your significant other or your husband or wife to know exactly what you want. And right. I, I personally, you know, I cringe when I hear people, you know, talk like that. Like, oh, my gosh, like he, he gets me the stupidest gifts. He just <laughs> totally does. I can't believe he doesn't know. Like, I would just, you know, love, like, to go to this particular restaurant or I would really love to do whatever. Um, I think that's actually selfish because when we talk about true love and how love ideally would work, it's really about not expecting as much, right. but giving in as much as you can. In other words, loving someone as much as you would want to be loved and doing for them, right? Do, do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. Right. And that's sort of a segue into something I wanted to talk but, about today. But, but hang on, I just want yeah, to make one point about mm -hmm. this because I was, I was speaking about this, you know, what you want, quote unquote, uh, I was right. speaking about this larger than the gift issue, too. This is a relationship right. issue because you right. you would be surprised how many men I'm willing to bet, and I'll speak for all of us now uh, okay. because because I think I'm on solid ground. You'd be surprised how many men you get to the point where there's that blow up in the relationship over an issue, and the guy's like, I didn't even know this was a problem. You know, right. Talk to me at the right. point where you're aggravated as as opposed to the point where you're just ready to throw things. You know, I, I, right. I'm perfectly happy to fix the problem. I just need to know that the problem exists. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So, you know, be communicative because, again, right. men aren't aren't intuitive on the level that I think most women expect them to be. Right. And, it, and again, I think that can go both ways. And, we're, and so it does get down to communication. I think when I talk to clients who are in the breakdown of a marriage, whether they're going through with their divorce or they're possibly thinking of reconciling and I'm helping them uh, go back into the marriage. What I always say is I want to acknowledge up front and make an assumption that you have tried to say and do things to change the relationship. And now you just, you're basically at a point where you want to just give up. Right. Right. Um, so especially in abusive relationships, when I'm listening for um, <clears throat> different things that would indicate to me that there was abuse, I always acknowledge with the man or the woman that this is very difficult. What makes it so stressful is that at least in our minds and hopefully in some actions, we did try to change things. We did try to speak up. And speaking up is hard for people to do. So an example would be, I don't know if you've ever done this with like a girlfriend or even a friend. Like say you had a friend, you know, Bob, and you would say, well, women do this all the time. I don't know if guys do this. I don't think guys do it as much. But women will say, hey, just for the record, if I ever do anything that upsets you or ticks you off, please let me know. And because I really value this relationship. Women really bond with other women. Like they... They, they, they love them like a sister, but it's even better because it's not the sister that annoyed you growing up. And women always have these conversations. And then when there's a problem, it's really hard to have that hard conversation. Like, hey, I never, th I never thought our friendship would get to this point, but you know, something you said to me the other day really kind of bothered me, and I just want to bring it up, but I'm afraid to bring it up because now when I bring it up, you're going to be defensive and you're going to be upset over the fact that I'm even bringing it up. Right. No, I have, you know, I have specifically done that in the most important relationship in my life so far. It didn't work <laughs> because she didn't take the advice. But that, I, I asked right. her one of two things, and one of the two things was if there's a problem, talk to me before it becomes a big mm -hmm. problem. Because Yeah, mm -hmm. you're right. It, I, I, don't, I forget the exact words, but it was something along the lines because this is important to me. I want to do it right. So if, you know, if you're irritated by something, let me know. Right. Because exactly. that's that's what happens to men a lot. And again, I'm speaking for this, speaking for the gender. Well, maybe I should be, I shouldn't be. But a lot of times we just walk into landmines, and it's just a huge explosion on something. And it's like, you know, I, you know, I didn't know. I would I would have been happy to try to work this out. Yeah. Right, right. And I think again, part of the problem with relationships is that we start out saying, 
you know, if there's ever a problem, let's talk it out. The problem is because we don't practice that, so it's kind of like love is a verb, right? Yep. Love is a verb. It's not a thing. It's not like it's not just something that you have between you. It's a verb, and because it's a verb, it means it's an action. Mm -hmm. And so when they talk about using that muscle, they're talking about it's one thing to say to each other when you're dating for a couple of years, hey, if there's ever a problem, just let me know that you're mad at me because I said this or that, and give me the opportunity to change or to say I'm sorry. Right. Right? Um, <clears throat> like, how many people do we know, Lou, that say, oh, I hate it when he does that? Right. Does I mean, he? seriously, how many people, yeah. we know so many people that they'll be like, I can't stand it when he does that. It's like, okay, chances are, if you brought it up, and just said, look, and this is gonna kind of be a weird conversation. I mean, I always, I'm a big fan of just prefacing a weird conversation or a hard conversation. Right. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Um, one of the things that I notice, for example, is um, with my husband and I, we can be like brutally honest with each other. And we can just, even on a hard day, we can just sort of like lash out at each other. But that's because there's a safety net right, between exactly. the two of us, yep. right? And we, and sometimes I get annoyed by it because it's sort of like, all right, I'm the one that you can unload on, but like, really, sometimes I'll say your problem is with your coworker or your problem is with a family member, right? And it really would behoove you. And I'm not trying to be like <laughs> Freud or. Dr. Shrink or anything. But Sounds kind of lawyerish, actually. It would behoove you. Right? Yeah. It would behoove you. I know, I just love that word. <laughs> Probably because the place we're staying at has a huge, huge rolling hill behind the the house and whatnot, mm -hmm. and, uh, and a pond and a stable and horses. Huh. Thinking of hooves a lot. Hooves. Yep. Um, yeah, it's this gorgeous place. Just on the, just outside of Kennebunk Port. But they're in the port, but not yet. Not where the stories are. Um, so sometimes, you know, we do ourselves a disservice, right, by not speaking up. And but you touched on a very important mm -hmm. point here. The mm -hmm. relationships where that is possible are the relationships where uh, certainly one partner, but hopefully both, yeah. Yeah. understand yeah. that the issue isn't existential. In other words, we're not breaking up over mm -hmm. this. Right. You know, I have a problem with this, right. so you have a problem with this. We're okay, but let's work through this. And that's the that's the environment where these conversations can happen. If every mm -hmm. problem becomes existential to the relationship, those are really hard conversations to have. Right. And the and the way that happens is because you're not practicing the muscle of speaking up. Right. So, again, love is a verb, but communication is a verb. And so... People talk about, look, if you ever have a problem, let me know, or whatever. Um, we always tend to overthink things and say, well, I'm not going to bring that up, or I'm not going to bring this up, or is that one really important? Um, if you're bringing up issues, I don't want to say regularly, like you're not like saying something to your spouse every morning at breakfast. Like, right. you know, I did think of something else I don't like. Like, it's just not how it works. <laughs> yeah. But... If you're not talking about <clears throat> things that you don't like or things that you don't agree with, so for example, um, when I was planning this, I was planning this trip. Literally, I planned it last summer, and so I didn't really inform my husband about much of it until like the last couple of months because mm -hmm. I just knew that he would really like this place and he didn't have to worry about you know paying for it or. Um, any of the details about right. the vacation, really. But as we got closer, he wanted to know a little bit more about the place, what does it look like, what's it? And I finally got to the point where I was like, look, just let it be a surprise, because even if you see the pictures online, it's just not, it doesn't do it justice. Right. Um, and I described it a hundred times and said, you're really going to like it. Um, and, I, you know, I just sort of took charge in that way. But the funny thing was when we drove up, I was thinking to myself, I had this quick panic attack, and I thought, whoa, all right, I hope he's not, because we love being, like, within walking distance of, like, either uh, the beach or the shops and restaurants in the port, even though we don't like being, like, right in there. Um, 
So this time we're like a five minute drive. And so we had to drive out of town. He was following me because we need two cars for this trip. And we, we drive up this beautiful long driveway and they've got these huge trees here. It's like being in a forest. They're like, I don't know, they're hundreds and hundreds of years old. And it's just this gorgeous piece of property with rolling grassy front yard and a backyard and a gazebo out back with a pond with a fountain in it. Nice. And, um, but he hadn't seen any of that. All he saw was the front of the antique house. And um, anyway, we drive up, and the first thing he says when he gets out is like, I could live here. <laughs> and I'm like, Whoosh. yeah. whoa, okay, this is great. But I did have this brief panic attack where I thought he would be like, really? Like, we're out in an antique house. Like, can't, we can't walk to anything. We have to drive everywhere. Right. So I had this just a slight panic attack that he was going to have a negative reaction which I would have had to deal with, yep. obviously, you know. Um, but basically for the last year, he just sort of trusted me. How legitimate was that panic attack, though? Did you really think that was going to happen? I, it was just a split second, right, because I know that he loves, like, like, we don't have to be on the beach, but we like to be, like, a block from the beach. Sure. Because it can be cheaper. Uh, we don't need to be, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was thinking, mm, he's, he loves, we love to walk. So now we have to drive places to walk. But yeah. yeah. Or, or if he had his problems with the place, would it have been a problem for the trip? In other words, you know, for example, right. me in this situation, right. it's like, all right, let's yeah. get, you know, it's fine. Let's get there. I'm here. I'm here with her. Everything's fine. You know, make it work. It's not ideal, but it's fine. Right. And sometimes right. when you have, you know, I've ended up on trips with people and you end up in accommodations that are less than ideal and it becomes yep. an adventure kind of thing. You just, you know, you try to make something of it. That's all. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> and um, so actually, that being said, this is a beautiful place. Uh, but at the same time, there are certain things that we would do differently because, for instance, we're, we're really into cooking. And the cooking utensils and pans and pots and pans and things are very limited. There's like two pots and pans. There's a cookie sheet, which kind of surprised me. I wasn't even expecting that we would have that. Uh, there's a lot of things that it doesn't have. Like, I like a big cup of coffee. Um, like, I literally like to hold a big cup of coffee. <laughs> They've got, like, the smallest cups of, the smallest porcelain cups I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, who drinks like that? Unless you, you're, in, you're at, like, the Ritz Carlton having tea and scones. Like, who drinks like that? Because nowadays we all have big cups of coffee. So little tiny things like that, we just sort of go, if this was our place and we were renting it, we would have a couple of larger mugs, which we've done in the past. We've rented places and gone out and bought a couple of things for the place that we rented. Yeah, see what you <laughs> did, though? You bonded over it. It's like, oh, right. you know, if I were renting this place, this is what I'd do. So you sit there and you go back and forth and you become a team. It's kind of, again, it, it becomes mm -hmm. a relationship experience instead of a problem. Right. And actually, this is such a cool place. Uh, you know, I'm sure that he's already thinking somewhere down the road, which we probably won't do, but he would, I know he would, we've often, you know, been at places where he said, you know what, I would love a place like this, like a bed and breakfast, although that's not what this is, but yeah. it could be potentially if they wanted to have us to the big house. We're in the smaller house, which is just as cool. We've got cathedral ceilings here that are like three stories high. Wow. Three yeah. stories. Wow. It's, it's like. It either I think it's I think it's a replica of a barn, and they made it into a um, three-car garage, and then this huge one-bedroom place is over it. And so we have the whole top of it, but it's more than the three bays because there's rooms behind it. Like I think I think there may be an office back there and some other rooms that we don't we don't have access to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just so cool because. Um, the thing I liked about it was the owner, the woman, the wife is an artist. And so we have original artwork in this place. I'm not kidding. I'm looking at this gorgeous oil painting over, um, over a bureau and there's an art gallery downstairs and they converted two of the garage bays and next to, and in the antique house, there's a huge cathedral ceiling because who doesn't like cathedral ceiling? <laughs> this huge cathedral ceiling addition, which other people might use as like a family room. Right. Um, with beautiful French doors, Lou, and lots of windows. And you walk in, and that's the main gallery. In fact, there's going to be an opening there Thursday night. 
And then in the in the stables, back in the barn, it's converted into it's usable for um, for art exhibits too. So the night before we arrived, there was an art exhibit there. And like I said to my husband, now here's a couple. I don't think he's an artist, but he supports his wife. Um, and clearly, he's on board because they've got not one, not two, but three large areas of their property designated for art gallery. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I, how cool is that? Like, it's, it's very cool, but the difference is what you cited the mm -hmm. difference in your experience with the husband and, and this couple's experience is there's a couple ways you can look at a problem. You can make mm -hmm. it the fault of your partner and put it between you, or you can right. st stand together and look out at the problem and, you know, hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, make lemonade out of it or, you know, however you want to put it. But it's the difference in a couple between it becoming the fault of the partner or becoming something that you and your partner can work on together. Right. You know, you're, you're exactly. either acting as a team or you're acting adversarially towards each other. You're either facing each other or standing on the same side of the fence. Exactly. And the thing is, it's really nice when, you know, one of you, if you're the pl – so a lot of times couples will look through brochures and websites and things and they will plan a trip together. Um, my husband is just so busy with work and – like, he doesn't mind talking about these things, you know, at night or on the weekends. But he has absolutely no problem with me taking over the wheel and planning it. Yeah. So what we're talking about here is we're talking about love languages, and we're talking about perspective. So a couple of months ago, I took some time to talk about... But wait a second. Um, How does that work for you, though? Because... It doesn't always work the same way with people. For example, uh -huh. in these situations where there was a trip or something and I was being asked uh -huh. about details or, or, you know, whether I'd enjoy it or not, it's like, well, are you going to be there? It's like, uh, I'm okay. Right. But some people right. see that. Some people like that, and some people see it as passive. I remember in, in the marriage, I was told a couple of times that, you know, we're remodeling a kitchen. And you're like, you need to fight me on the countertops. And what do you mean fight you? I want you to have what you want. She was upset because I, she didn't feel I was putting a voice into, you know, what the kitchen should be. And all I cared about was have the kitchen that you want. That's important. To uh -huh. me. You know, so uh -huh. I don't care what color the kitchen counter is as long as it makes uh -huh. you happy. So the, the, different people right. react to that passivity a, a different way. Right. So, and and that's an interesting point because... In that particular case, so let's think about it. So for you, you literally, you actually would like either a white kitchen or a black kitchen or a walnut kitchen or um, you wouldn't mind like, uh, like you know, a, a shiny black marble counter. You also wouldn't mind like. Honestly, so it doesn't is, weigh on my mind. It's Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. What I, want is a, what I wanted was a kitchen that she would enjoy. Right. But the reality is, so like my husband and I, when we're looking at houses and, and things like that, because we do that a lot, um, we'll talk about like, well, I definitely wouldn't like that kind of counter. And he's like, yeah, I would really want this kind of counter. And um, it's so interesting because like for, for us, so what you're describing is hilarious because my husband would never sit back and say, whatever you want. <laughs> never. Yeah. He would never, never, never. He and it's not so it's not that passive. I wasn't even that passive, mm -hmm. like whatever you want. It's like if I was asked an opinion, you know, yeah. I'd give it. Yeah. You know, I'd right. tend to I'd tend towards something darker there or you know, something yeah. like that or you know. Yeah. I'll give an opinion. It's just like I wasn't gonna go to the wall for anything because in the end right. I wanted her to have mm -hmm. what she wanted. Right. Well and the other thing too is so like decorating or you know kitchen isn't your thing whereas like my husband and I like we always laugh we're like we should have been like you know one of those husband and wife reality shows for <laughs> for decorating or whatever flipping houses um, yeah 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 because we both like we really can we can look at a room and and think about things that especially if it's a house that's already existing and you might want to like do a little something different we get we'll, we'll look at it and like we'll say sometimes we'll say that like after we leave somebody's house will be like great place but you know that fireplace i would have done this up with it and i'm like 
people don't care like we do. Like we just <laughs> right. Yeah. People don't care what the mantle looks like. Whereas oh, I'm not shy know. with that type of opinion at all. I, I, my yeah. favorite phrase is, yeah, it, I wouldn't have made that choice. But <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. But um, but everybody's different, and you know, some couples, you know, one person does one thing, one thing does the other. But what we're really talking about is. Um, having a perspective, and I think it, in relationships that aren't working, right, mm-hmm. one of the things that people have a hard time with, and they're, it's a sticking point, and nobody really puts this out to them. I think a lot of times in, um, you know, when, when you go to marriage counseling and whatnot, they're just focusing on, you know, well, what's the problem? What's the, you know, talk to me. What's the problem? One of the key points for changing yourself, whether your marriage or relationship is breaking up or not, is in the moment, in that relationship, or going forward when you start to look for new relationships, is changing your perspective. And that's, that's a reality check that a lot of people don't necessarily want to hear. So one of the things that I work on with clients is I'm like, I hear you, I, I'm on your side. Like, I am here for you. I just want to point out, you know, even with a failed marriage, I don't care. One person could be 90, 95% at fault. Okay, I'm just throwing that out there. It can happen. But there's a 5% there, and it's not somebody else. It's got to be you because you're the partner. Right. And so whether you're working on your relationship or it failed and you're going forward, you have to have a reality check, which is why I love doing my Coach Judith work because I'm like, I'm like your sister, but I'm not. And I'm like your mom, but I'm not. Right? Right. I'm here to coach you and to be gentle and loving and caring, but I am putting you, I'm taking you off, putting you on the sidelines, teaching you some lessons, and putting you back on the field so that you can get down to the goal in a healthy way. And one of the ways that you can do that, and the only way you can do it, is changing your perspective. And one of the things that we've talked about in the past occasionally one of the things that you and I talk about without using the actual verbiage, I was thinking about it um, over the last couple of days when I was thinking about what we might talk about, um, which wasn't necessarily Kenny Bunk's point, but I love talking about Kenny Bunk's point, so too bad that's what we talked about. Um, but one of the things we talk about is blind spots. Blind spots, yes. Right? Yeah. And Usually it's the other person's love language, right? Right. Usually that's the blind spot. Right, but the thing is, we're we're quick. We're used, but our own blind spots. So we're a, like, I'm able to see. Don't take it personally, but I could see. Let's just say, I could every every week I'm in the studio with you. I might be like, oh my gosh, like, you know, I don't know. Let's just make it up. Say you always had tea or coffee and you spilled it. I'd be like, right. Lou's always like spilling his coffee or, um, you know, Lou's always making me laugh and I'm trying to make a serious point or, you know. Lou gets me on the air and then he leaves and now I'm sitting there by myself. Which is, none of these things happen. Right. But I can be quick to judge you and I can be quick to see like what you're doing or maybe you say, oh, I went out with somebody last night and here's what happened on the date. And like I formulate like, oh my God, like Lou's always doing this or whatever. But the reality is when you're in a relationship, that's what I'm talking about. When you're in a relationship, you're looking at the other person, obviously, because you're watching them and they're talking to you. And you're, you're seeing the things that you like and the things you don't like with the other person. But the reality is we have blind spots. There are things that we're doing and saying that they're quietly thinking, eh, right? Yeah. Could do without that, but I'm, it's not a fight, right? Like you always say, is this really important? Yeah. Is this going to, like, is this a divorceable moment? Do I have to bring this up with her? What's and more important, the make, issue or the relationship? Right. Exactly. Yeah. But the reality is we have blind spots. And um, it's really important to, like with my clients, I'm like, what I'm trying to do with you is try to um, explain what those are so that you can stop missing what's right in front of you. Right? Right. Um, So part of that is mindfulness and being aware of what's going on. So things that we see... um, like we're seeing things in other people, but don't forget, sometimes others see these blind spots more easily than we see them in ourselves, right? 
Yeah, and in fact, one of the things while you're talking about that uh, that I'm thinking about is that we have blind spots with ourselves as well because sometimes right. we pass and pass and pass on boundaries because of that issue. I've done this myself where it's what's more important, yeah. the issue of the relationship, and you, mm-hmm. d- you fail to look far enough down the road to see that, you know, this is going to become an issue if, if we don't talk about this you know it's not big right now but this is going to become an issue down the road if i don't right. if we don't deal with it now you know sometimes mm-hmm. the issue is more important than it is at the moment because you're early in it right it gets right. chronic and it gets it expands and you know if you quote unquote re- reward the behavior you don't want reward it by mm-hmm. not picking up on it mm-hmm. often that behavior mm-hmm. expands right well yeah and the thing is so when i say blind spots we have blind spots with like like what we are and aren't seeing with other people, which can be why we get into a bad pattern of dating certain people that we shouldn't. Right. Right? Because, and it's always so interesting to me that other people can see it. Right? Oh, sure. And and we don't. Like we're sitting there, like we might be sitting there going, like I could be saying, no, that guy that I dated last night, he doesn't even, he's not even in the same type of work. Like I could be saying to a friend of mine, like, what do you mean? I'm like, there I go again, picking the same type of guy. Right. So it's always interesting that others can see our blind spots eat more easily, and that's why, like, as because coach, what we that's see, what, doing. what we see mm-hmm. is colored by what we want to see, correct? Especially when it comes to relationships. It, it's what we want to see, but it's also, you know, we're viewing things through learned biases. So over time, we we're biased, right? Like we like certain things, or we dislike other things. Right. And the things that we don't like aren't necessarily bad and they aren't necessarily they're not necessarily um something that wouldn't work for us so for instance when someone is dating so when i when i'm working with someone who's dating they're constant it's pretty obvious to me as an outsider i can see their blind spots and i can see their patterns and that's my job is to point it out and so they'll say to me but no like these three guys are from you know two are from new york and one's from boston right and one is an artist, and two of them work on Wall Street in New York. Like, I'm just making this up. Sure. And I'll say, okay, so, like, visually, you know, there's not, there are not that many similarities. But the way you're describing how they date, how they talk, their backgrounds. Right. Um, how your conversations go, which could be your own fault because you've got a pattern. Right. Um, there's a pattern. And so even though, like, you know, a zebra and a giraffe and a leopard <laughs> all look different and you're going to think that they're totally different and you're going to think you're dating well yeah what i'm telling you is that i see a pattern so i'm making this up they all live in a jungle <laughs> they're all forget the giraffe part you know say it was something else they're all predators they all eat other animals um there's there's similarities that my clients aren't seeing that i can see because I'm standing back. Right. Like I said, I'm like your mom, but I'm not. So I care about you like a mother, <clears throat> and I want your well-being. I have your your well-being and whatnot in mind with everything I'm doing with you, but it's my job to be looking at it more with a, a different kind of lens than you right. would be looking at your issues. Guys have, uh, they have types, they have physical types, but they also have uh, personality types. Guys, some guys are looking for the mothering sure. type, some it's guys are looking true. for the homebody, some it's guys true. are looking for the party girl, some guys are uh, looking yeah. for, you know, the adventure, mm-hmm. some guys are mm-hmm. looking for the damsel in distress, that's a big one. Yeah, and it's so, you're right, and those are all such great examples. Um, so, um, before my husband met me, he he was the one that was going for the damsel in distress. Right. You know, and he was, to be honest, like when we started talking about it early on, like when he started talking about like past relationships and his ex-wife and whatnot, um, it was funny because I said, you know, it just kind of came out. I said, well, I guess I'm kind of low maintenance. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm high maintenance by any means. Right. Um, I guess I'm low maintenance because all those different things that these people were demanding, like it wouldn't even occur to me to ask for that, right? Especially because when I think about it, those women were so high maintenance and needy. And needy. For me, like I kind of pride myself in, you know, 
my love language is acts of service. Right. And these women would be like, excuse me, you cleaned my house for my birthday? <laughs> Where's my diamond, right? Yeah. And for me, Lou, I would just be like, you know, did you just, like, drive me to, did you just take the time to, you know, um, drive me somewhere to, like, get my car, like, car washed and waxed? Right. And, like, did you just, like, clean the house and set the table nice for dinner? Like, to me, it would be like, well, you you know, you, you, right. you had me at, uh, <laughs> you had me at, I cooked you a dinner. Right, exactly, yeah. I'm not kidding. Like, if somebody cooks me a dinner, I'm, like, friends for life. Like, I just find that so intimate. Well, that's not, that's not in the needy way of damsel in distress, but guys like to, right. guys like to fix things, and guys like to have an impact. So when they do a thing, you, right. you, you try to learn the yeah. things that have a good-sized impact, you know, whether it's buying shoes mm -hmm. or whether it's fixing dinner, whether it's, you know, you know bringing lunch uh, to work or things <laughs> like that. You know, there are things that... that you know, you feel good about doing afterwards because you made a difference and it's appreciated. And, you know, guys like that because we're dogs. We, we like to please the owner. <laughs> right. No, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, how much time do we have, by the way? Uh, about four and a half minutes. Oh, okay. Um, so one of the other aspects of changing your perspective, and again, we pull this into looking at relationships, is we've talked about this in the past, um, meditation. And when I say meditation, I'm talking about quiet time. Mm -hmm. So self-reflection. I know people get really f weirded out by meditation, by the concept of meditation. You know, the yeah. the lotus position and hovering off the ground a foot, that's not what meditation right. is. Right. And I get weirded out by the fact that so many people don't take the time to just sit quietly, just literally sit quietly. You don't have to be in a lotus position, but you can be sitting in a comfortable chair in the living room. The TV's not on. Your radio's not on, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But, Lou, there are so many people that don't even do this. I think one of the problems is if I can if I can throw this at you, maybe you'll see, maybe you'll see it the way I do. Maybe you don't. I think the problem with no, it because I'm an every man guy who's not into this granola type of crap at all. But I've okay. got I've gotten into meditation and mindfulness, right. and, and the thing about it is that you talk about meditation as the goal, and meditation right. isn't the goal. What the goal is is learning how to control what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. just right. you know, having your hand on the steering wheel of your brain. It's like, you know, your brain is not you. Your brain is just a thing, and it's throwing thoughts at you. You've got to learn to control that, and it'll make your life more peaceful. Meditation mm -hmm. is a way to learn how to do that. It's not the goal in itself. The goal in right. itself is to control what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. Harness what you're thinking about. Right. And when I say, so like... Um, Self-reflection or meditation. So self-reflection, um, both of these are quiet times, right? So mm -hmm. self-reflection could just be journaling. Right. right. So sure. my, my clients, I have my clients journaling all the time. Not always at the very beginning if there's other stuff to deal with, but as soon as I can, I have them journaling. And I give them very specific, there's a specific way that they journal. It's incredibly um, important. It's it's such right. a great processing tool. You will discover right. things in the process of trying to put them down on paper mm -hmm. that you didn't mm -hmm. yeah, it'll it'll come to your head all the time. It's like, you know, now that I'm thinking about this, yeah, this is what I missed or or right. you know, you think about it a different way in that process of getting it down to words. Right. And the key is when you're um, using self reflection tools or meditation um, it becomes possible to actually witness um, your own patterns, right? Right. Because, like you said, you're not focusing too much on the thoughts, but you're, when the thoughts come in, you are to look at them. And it can shed a lot of light on a hidden, what I call like hidden or um, limiting, let's just say that, limiting aspects of your nature, right? Right. Um, so once you pinpoint a thought, especially if it's the same kind of thought that comes in, it's okay to look at it because guess what? You're pinpointing a blind spot. Right. Because and that's going to keep coming up. And all the things that you're trying to process, right. you're going to say, oh, this is what bothered me about it. You know, that's what bothered me about this, too. And that's when you identify yeah. what's going on in your own head. No. Right. But think about it, Lou. If you're doing some self-reflection, you're, you're, you know, journaling, journaling every night before you go to sleep or something, or some people do it in the morning uh, just because they feel like they have the time. Um, so once you, you see 
this pattern of what you're writing about every day or when you're in meditation, what's the thought that sort of keeps coming in? What type of a thought is kind of coming in, right? Right, right. Yep. There is going to be a pattern of no matter which way, whether it's, like I said, self-reflection, meaning journaling or whatever, um, or you're sitting quietly and meditating for 10 or 15 minutes a day. So once you pinpoint that thought, that recurring pattern, that is your blind spot. And you can't unsee it, right? right? You can't, especially if you're seeing it like, like as a coach, I'm looking at people's journals. I'm like, write whatever you want, but I am going to be reading it. And Oh, you so, read the journals, huh? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Or, well, if I have to, if they're not like really, if, I'm not, if they're not telling me enough. Yeah. Um, but they have to bring their journals with them when we meet. But basically, when once you pinpoint those, that blind spot, that pattern, that, that thought process or continuing theme, then you can't unsee it. And so with a client of, with my clients, I'm looking for it and I'm pointing it out. And then with this light that we're shedding on this pattern, new possibilities can emerge. Sure. Because if you can recognize a blind spot and say, oh my gosh, I never saw that or I didn't know that's what I was doing, now you have the possibility to change your perspective. But you can't change uh, something if you don't know what it is. Well, awareness automatically changes your perspective. Just just the act of becoming aware of what it is. Like, you know, it, you, you've talked about it in the past with your husband, and you, right. you might get irritated about dishes in the sink, and it's not about dishes right. in the sink. It's about ha something that happened with your mother. And I know this is therapy talk, and it sounds cliche, but once you understand that, you know, I'm mad at him because of what used to be at home, you, start, you, you just approach it a different way because you understand what the source of it is. Right, exactly. And you still want them to you know, clean up the dishes. That, that doesn't necessarily have to change, but you have a different relationship with the irritation. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I think in my husband's case, part of it is, honestly, he was single for quite some time <laughs> be before his first marriage and before me, right? So we had these gaps. These, not gaps, we he was on his own. Okay. Put it that way. So what I'm hearing when you say uh -huh. that, what I'm hearing right. is you're not uh -huh. irritated at the dishes in the sink as much as you're irritated at the fact he's not recognizing he's in a relationship now and his life has right. changed. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So that, like, again, you listen. still want him to pick up the dishes, but y at least you have a different relationship right. with your irritation. Right. And yeah. like I say, like, you know, you obviously don't care that there's dishes all over the counter and stuff because you know that the next day or whenever you're going to just get him in the dishwasher. Yeah. But for me, it just, you know, it's just one more area of clutter that I feel is, that's one area. You're not living alone, control. damn it. Clean up the dishes. <laughs> You're not living alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're in a relationship. Sign this paper so you recognize it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's like, did I forget to put that in the vows? I forgot to put that in the vows. <laughs> All right, when we renew them, uh, October is our five-year anniversary. When we renew our vows, I'm going to put in there, oh. clean up the dishes. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. Okay, why don't you tell people about the things you have coming up and give contact information and things like right. that. Great. So, judithjameson.org. Jameson is spelled, in case you're not looking at your screen, Jameson is spelled just like the Irish whiskey. Judithjameson.org. You can see what my coaching is all about. Um, I sell my services in packages. Packages of five, packages of ten sessions. Um, and I have upcoming the second Saturday of September in Needham. I will be running a workshop with a divorce attorney and a financial planner. And it's $45 to attend. Uh, other than that, in mid to late September, I will be starting up a new support group for people going through separation or divorce or they're already divorced and they're still a mess. Mm -hmm. And it's a great support group, and it'll be in Marblehead. Nice. And we have to get you up to the North Shore here. Yeah. And I'm running one in Andover. Um, well, I guess still. Marblehead is the North Shore, so. Yeah, North Shore. The northern North Shore. Yeah, we need something like, uh, what? What are you thinking, like Methuen or something? No, I'm thinking New Report. I'm thinking, I'm thinking Seacrest. I would love to run one. I would love to run one in Newburyport. We'll have to work on that. Yeah, we got to work on that. 
JudithFamison.org, both the website and the Facebook page. Mm -hmm. On the Facebook page, other episodes of this, you'll find a lot of great subjects, uh, wellness and uh, narcissism and uh, uh, have some parenting tips and things like that. Check out all the past episodes of Make Up or Break Up and JudithJameson.org, the uh, mm -hmm. website for uh, mm -hmm. contact information, information on uh, upcoming events and uh, Judith's programming so you can get this uh, contact started here. That's right. Let's make up or break up. Call <laughs> Coach Judith. And we'll be by phone next week as well. You're still up in, up in Maine? Yep. All I'm right. still in Maine next week, so we'll give it a whirl again. All right. Then we'll talk to you then. All right. Sounds good. Be well. Be healthy. Be healthy.